Well, good morning and welcome to our service here at Tickham Community Church. Uh, I hope you are all well and uh, that please remember to keep in touch with the WhatsApp and send us some messages here and there to keep, keep us all in together. We're going to start by singing Hear These Praises from a Grateful Heart. Let's just pray together. Father God, we have just sung there, hear these praises from a grateful heart. And how when we think about you, the praises start. And Father, at the start of this time together, we just want to think about you. Think about your grace that's been given so freely. Thank you for our eternal life that we have in you. But thank you too for the purpose and meaning you give to life every day. And thank you for being with us now. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, surprising gifts. They very rarely look the same. They always come in different shapes and sizes. But these days, they're not always quite so surprising. I remember when I was young at Christmas, we used to write a, a list down on a piece of paper of the things that we might like to get. 
And these days, those lists have become a little bit more uh, comprehensive and we, we browse the uh, web, don't we? We create our links to the things that we'd like and then hopefully we'll get exactly what we want. But gifts can be surprising and it's nice to have a surprise sometimes until we open them. And then occasionally the gift isn't quite what we wanted. And uh, today we're going to be looking at the Holy Spirit. And we're going to be looking at the surprising gifts that the Holy Spirit gives. And just as we might earnestly look through and find those gifts that we would like for our Christmas or our birthday presents, we're encouraging the Bible to earnestly seek the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But also, those gifts can be a surprise. Those gifts can be something we perhaps weren't quite expecting. But gifts from God through the Holy Spirit are always going to be beneficial. They're always going to be purposeful. And they're always going to bring about, enhance the kingdom of God and do us good. And now we're going to hear from Dad. 
well hello everybody and uh yeah it's been um uh, quite some time actually uh since we've met together and um yeah i hope you're well uh, and uh, and keeping safe um but it's um yeah it has been some time uh that we have met together which is um yeah really strange uh and it's also been some time since i've actually spoken uh, so um bear with me uh, as we run through what we're going to talk about today uh, it's quite an interesting subject but actually uh, something that um is really important uh, for us as christians to really grasp uh, and cliff has set the scene for us uh, when he was talking uh, about um, receiving the Holy Spirit uh, and as, as Cliff said uh, receiving the Holy Spirit is something that we um, should uh, earnestly desire um, should earnestly earnestly seek um, and what we're talking about today is exactly the same it's actually um, again earnestly seeking um, the gifts of the Holy Spirit and so, yeah, today's title, it's uh, the um, t title for today is The Holy Spirit Gives Surprising Gifts. Um, I, when I was given this subject, I need to sort of just explain, um, yeah, to start with, that actually when I was given the subject, uh, I thought that the subject would actually be um, looking at the gifts and breaking them down um, and actually explaining what the gifts are all about um, but uh, we're not going to do that today um, I think that that would be good to do uh, at some point uh, and so I'm hoping that we'll be able to do that uh, but yeah what we're going to do is just run through uh, and actually just look at uh, the gifts but look at them briefly uh, and explain why uh, the gifts are there and the gifts are there basically to uh, empower the church uh, to instruct and to give help to us as the church to function as the church uh, in many varied ways so that's the whole point of what we're trying to get over today and as the title says it's the Holy Spirit gives surprising gifts so as a way of introduction um, which has sort of been done already uh, yeah that is what we are looking at today so the um, the reading for day to today actually is 1 Corinthians 12, 1 to 11. And uh, that is um, what I'd like to do now is actually just read, read that. So uh, it's, if you have got your Bibles and you want to turn to it, it's 1 Corinthians 12 and reading from verse 1. Now, about spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that when you are, were pagans, somehow or another, you were influenced and led astray by mute idols. Therefore, I tell you that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus is cursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men. Now, to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given 
through the Spirit, the message of wisdom. To another, the message of knowledge, by the means of the same Spirit. To another, faith, by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing, by that one Spirit. To another, miscellaneous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And still another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit. And he gives them to each one just as he determines. Okay, so that is found, just to confirm, in 1 Corinthians 12. Uh, and it's uh, it's something that we uh, have all read, I'm sure. Um, and uh, it's quite interesting, isn't it? Because we, we all like gifts. And um, uh, some gifts that we receive we like uh, more than others uh, and I'm sure that uh, we've all had gifts that um, we've really wanted and we've all had gifts that perhaps we could take it or leave it uh, and that's the way it is with gifts you know sometimes we receive gifts that uh, actually mm, okay yeah I've received that gift and that's really nice thank you but actually it's not something that necessarily I've really 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 wanted and uh, so today we're looking at gifts that uh, are given to help us function as a church uh, as a body of believers uh, in varied ways so yeah the gifts okay so the gifts in 1 Corinthians 12 uh, show us how the church should rely on the Holy Spirit. Should rely on the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us, to show us the way forward. Uh, Cliff has already told us um, that we need to be filled with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. And he's also mentioned one of the gifts that we read uh, there in 1 Corinthians 12. Uh, we see that in verse 10. So Cliff mentioned that uh, it was the gift of discernment, which in the NIV actually calls it dis distinguishing between spirits. So different versions call uh, the same gift different things. Uh, and we always used to... Um, know it as the gift of discernment and the NIV calls it distinguishing between spirits. So Cliff has already mentioned um, that that gift is something that is uh, really important as a Christian and a spirit-filled Christian to have uh, and yeah I just really want to emphasize that that um, yeah being filled with the Holy Spirit and then having that gift of discernment uh, is, is, I would say, really important. Okay, so the first point I want to make, actually, is that these gifts are completely different uh, from the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, even though they, came, they come from the same source, but they are actually completely different. So I want us to read um, Galatians 5. Uh, Galatians 5, uh, 22 to 26. And this is the, um, the gift, uh, the fruit of the Spirit. Okay, so 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things are that there is no law. Those who belong to Christ 
have crucified the spirit, the sinful nature with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, envying each other. Okay, so Galatians uh, 5, uh, 22 to 26, and it's the fruit of the Spirit. And it shows us how we slowly become uh, more like Jesus by putting the fruit of the Spirit into action day by day. The Spirit's fruit should help us to grow as Christians day by day. So all those things we've read, it would help us to actually be more and more like Christ on a daily basis. It's good to be reminded of the fruit of the Spirit so we can be more like Christ every day. So in the Spirit, um, the Spirit is generous with his gifts to us in completely different ways. And really that's the whole point of 1 Corinthians uh, 12. It, the whole point is that it is actually, yeah, God and has given uh, through the Holy Spirit those gifts that can be used to uh, build a church, to encourage the church, to confirm that we as a church are actually going the right way. We're doing the right things um, to create order. And there's so many other things that actually uh, those gifts, uh, gifts of the Spirit, are, are given to us for. They're gifts which, uh, again, perhaps we, um, we either take for granted or actually we don't even acknowledge that are, are there. So that is, um, that was point one, that actually we have the gifts that are available, but the point of, um, uh, point one was all about the fact that actually it's not the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is something that we should have uh, on a daily basis, helping us changing us, molding us and into those people that actually are more Christ-like every day. So point two, the gifts that we're looking at today are there to help us um, function in very varied ways. Uh, it's the same holiness, different gifts as we see in uh, Chapter 12, 1 Corinthians. It's the same spirit. Verse 4. Uh, there are several gifts listed in the chapter, but it's only a sample uh, list. And so let's just very quickly uh, look at those um, in Corinthians 12. Okay, so the, the list of gifts... Uh, okay, so we're reading from, I'm reckoning it's verse 8, yeah. Uh, so there's spirit, okay, so we're starting with a message of wisdom, knowledge, faith, gifts of healing, Miraculous powers, prophecy, distinguishing between spirits, speaking in tongues, and still interpretation of the tongues. And then that's the list that we see there in, in actually uh, chapter 12, 1 Corinthians. 
So it is, that's a sample because we can see that there are more gifts listed elsewhere in, as Paul mentions. He mentions um, lots and lots of gifts and, and a few others that um, he mentions are uh, staying single, encouraging others, giving generously. And Paul calls them gifts. Um, so if your gift or your strengths aren't mentioned in in the list that we've looked at in 1 Corinthians 12, or those that I've just read out, staying single, encouraging others and giving generously, you know, I wouldn't start worrying because there's so many gifts uh, that are... Um, are there in the in the Bible, uh, and actually so many gifts that we are given um, by the Holy Spirit to operate as a body of believers. So it's not a list that I'm just going to reel off to say actually yeah, this is all the gifts, uh, and actually this is where we should be you know working in the gifts and how we should be working in the gifts. Okay, the point of today is to actually get over the fact that God has given, through the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit has given us these gifts to function as a body of believers uh, in our church and the church worldwide. So um, he calls them all gifts. And it's not just those from chapter 12 that we really need to be uh, homing on, in, on. We need to actually be thinking about the whole picture. Um, and some of us have upfront gifts. Uh, some of us um, have uh, gifts that um, are uh, helping, encouraging, giving administration and so on and we need you know lots of different gifts we need people with gifts upfront gifts um, if we didn't have upfront gifts uh, then we wouldn't be able to function properly would we and if we um, didn't have an administrator uh, we wouldn't be able to function properly either and if we didn't have people that actually uh, had gifts in uh, music in gifts of, uh, you know, sort of uh, caretaking or whatever that gift that they've got um, to operate in the church, then actually in the body we wouldn't be able to function as we do. So God, he knew this. He knew that we he we needed um, you know these gifts, and the Holy Spirit then. Uh, gave the gifts for us to function in the way that we do. And as I say, some have gifts of uh, up front. Um, again, it doesn't mean to say that your gift is actually less than the people at the front doing what they do. Because actually we all work together uh, in the same body. So that's um, so. No, no body of believers can work without these vital and varied gifts. If we didn't have the varied gifts that the Holy Spirit gives, then actually we wouldn't function properly. So, just in conclusion, uh, we've been given gifts and strengths by the Holy Spirit to glorify God. I think that's really important. Okay, it's not for our glory. It's not for the church's glory. It's actually to glorify God. And I think we need to keep that as our focus. Okay, we're given gifts holy by the Holy Spirit to glorify, to worship, to give God the glory. Uh, and that is really important for us to remember. Some of us may have spectacular gifts as listed in in chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians yes we we may have 
but it doesn't make us any better or higher up the chain than anybody else because others of us our gifts may not be so spectacular and we need to let those gifts uh, be operational as well so that everybody is using their gifts that they've been given by the Holy Spirit to actually help us function as a church, as a body of believers. So, those gifts help us work together so that the church grows together and glorifies God at the same time. So we've got this twofold thing going on that actually, yeah, we're operating the gifts of the Spirit and the church grows because of it and we glorify God at the same time. Now, this is really important to grasp that we are God's people. We are God's children uh, and he loves to give us great gifts. Now, we find this in Mark. I um, should have mentioned this just now, but um, I don't know if you remember um, in Mark, it tells us that, yeah, God is wanting to give us good gifts because we're his children. Uh, and um, as, you know, yeah, Cliff mentioned, yeah, um, we wouldn't give our children a serpent. We wouldn't give them a snake, okay, if we love them. We might feel like it sometimes. But actually we wouldn't because actually ultimately we love our children. And this is the same uh, with God. God has given us these gifts to grow as a church and to glorify him at the same time. Okay, there's just one uh, one thing I'd like to finish with um, on uh, on the conclusion there. And it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a quote. And it says, uh, we'd fall apart without tendons and seize up without cartilage. And that's so true, isn't it? Yeah, we work together. We are bound together to, again, grow together, to glorify God together. And I just feel it's really important that those gifts are actually operated those gifts that we've been given are put into action uh, we've got so much to glorify God for because of the gifts that he's given us uh, and I think it's really good uh, for us to just yeah just think about that and actually just realize that God has been so generous uh, with the talents with the gifts with the strengths uh, that he has given us through the Holy Spirit now, um, a few days ago, I came across uh, in my Bible reading, um, the Bible reading notes, and actually I, I was really encouraged by it because it actually really confirmed what I was actually going to be talking about uh, today. So I want, I want to read that uh, to you. And some of you probably have actually, um, more than likely if you read the same Bible notes as me, you would have actually um, uh, sort of heard this. But as I finish, I just want to read this uh, uh, so that you um, you get a real sense of what uh, this is all about. Okay, so the title is actually A Lorry Driver's Hands. Okay, it's based on the scripture of Romans 12, verses 3 to 8. Uh, we have different gifts... If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. That's the verse uh, that comes out in Romans, Romans 12. Okay, so um, the news came as a shock. Having already survived prostate cancer, my father had now been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Uh, to complicate matters, my father is my mother's full-time carer. 
So attending to her, yeah, her, her chronic illnesses. With both parents needing care, they would be there would be some difficulties in the days ahead. After flying home to be with them, I visited my parents' church one Sunday. There was a man named Helmut approach and he approached me saying he'd like to help. Two days later, Helmut visited uh, the home our home, with a checklist. You'll need some meals when the chemotherapy starts, he said. I'll arrange the cooking rotor. What about the mowing? I can do that. And what day is your rubbish collected? Helmut was a retired lorry driver. But to us... He became an angel. We discovered how often helped that that he helped others. He helped single mothers, the homeless, the elderly. While believers in Jesus are called to help others, some have a special capacity to do so. The Apostle Paul calls it the gift of mercy. Romans 12.8 People with this gift they spot the needs they rally practical assistance and then they serve over time without getting overwhelmed moved by the Holy Spirit they're the hands of the body of Christ reaching out to touch our, our wounds And it goes on to say some more, but the point I want to bring out is that the Holy Spirit was using Helmut to actually bless, to encourage, to do uh, things that were actually, they were on a practical level, but they were actually the Holy Spirit leading and guiding and helping because it's what he could do. And I think we uh, we can learn a lot from that and I'd just like to say just yeah just reinforce that actually we all if we're willing if we earnestly seek we can all be led and guided by the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will give us those gifts that actually we need to do the job that is in hand so thanks very much Uh, for listening I hope it makes sense Um, it's a bit strange uh, sitting here in front of a camera and not in front of a church Uh, I when I'm in front of a church I I can quite uh, you know quite easily have some banter with people I can't do that but you know it's great to be able to look at the word together and um, and be encouraged and I hope today uh, that you'll be encouraged Thanks again. Bye-bye. Well, let's just pray together before we sing our last song. Father God, we just want to thank you for being able to meet together this morning. We thank you for the words that we've heard. And Lord, I just pray that we will um, just be earnestly seeking the gifts that you want to give us, Lord, to use for your glory in our everyday lives and to build and to encourage the church um, your people in Jesus name Amen Yeah.
Well, thank you for joining us today. Remember to look out for the newsletter, which is floating around. I think we're back to monthly newsletters now, uh, but that should have all the information that you need. And we look forward to seeing you again next week.